Hey everyone, welcome back to Installation 00, and more specifically, welcome to the Armory. This is where all weapons from Halo lore will be featured and analysed in detail. In this episode, we look at the Fuel Rod Gun. Let's begin. The Fuel Rod Gun, officially known as the Type 33 Light Anti-Armor Weapon, is a shoulder-fired mortar weapon with a radioactive component. It was formerly used by the Covenant military and now in service with the Swords of Sanghelios. It is also sometimes called the Flak Cannon or the Fuel Rod Cannon. First encountered by the UNSC in 2531, the Fuel Rod Gun is essentially a man-portable version of the Fuel Rod Cannon that is mounted on Covenant vehicles. Though its primary role is a support weapon that is commonly employed in both anti-personnel and anti-vehicle roles, it has been used in much more aggressive means as a primary weapon by particularly skilled operators. It appears to be recoil operated, making it among a very, very select few weapons of Covenant origin to use a recoil system for weapons operation. Because of this, it would be assumed that the weapon would be somewhat familiar in form and function to human weapons, and thus be more easily understood. However, the weapon's energetic component has been the subject of nearly three decades of intensive human study. The weapon is manufactured by the Merchants of Kiosk, however I hasten to add that they are only able to replicate its manufacture by using prehistoric Forerunner machinery that occasionally requires Huragok maintenance and has proven nearly impossible to study. As such, while they do produce the weapon, it would be otherwise impossible for them to produce the weapon, or at least highly unlikely, were it not for the Forerunner machinery which they poorly understand. In this regard, it is more accurate to say that the merchants simply use a machine that they only know how to get to do its basic functions. I'd personally not call that manufacturing and liken it more to simply replicating, but let's not get tied up in formalities. Both Mysteria Armory and the Materials Group have acquired the aforementioned foreign machinery, but are reluctant to produce potentially dangerous feedstock isotopes. While humans are evidently more predisposed to understand the machine workings, the material that is utilised for the weapon is an energetic metamaterial and strain-bonded lattice, an imperfect form of Forerunner infusion gel, and as such is highly unstable. It remains to be seen if humanity managed to swap out this imperfect material for the purer Forerunner infusion gel and make a weapon far more deadly and efficient than its current incarnation. The Furod gun measures 130.8 centimetres or 51.5 inches in length, it has a barrel length of 73.6 centimetres or 29 inches, it is 18.5 centimetres or 7.3 inches in width, and 54.7 centimetres or 21.5 inches in height and weighs, empty, 20.8 kilograms or 46 pounds and fully loaded, 23.3 kilograms or 51 pounds. The fuel rod gun works extremely well as a psychological weapon. Its size, visibility and known lethality draws the attention of the enemy. This can be used to the wielder's advantage, as the soldiers will often ignore closer, more obvious threats to try to take the weapon and its wielder off of the field of battle. This then presents the opportunity for allied forces to attack the otherwise distracted soldiers and thus make a victory highly more likely. Moreover, if the operator positions themselves in a highly defensible position, particularly if there is a bottleneck and very little way to be flanked, a steady and intelligent use of force can keep an extremely large counter-offensive at bay for as long as the user has ammunition. The design of the Furod gun is unique, more akin to a large ornament than a deadly weapon. The barrel of the weapon is long and black, covered by thick gold plates that make up the body of the weapon. The ammunition is loaded at the top aft section of the fuel rod gun and can hold up to five ballistic projectiles. When the large trigger is pulled, the weapon ejects the projectile at high speeds. It can be assumed that the instant the projectile leaves the barrel of the weapon, the large flash associated with firing the fuel rod gun destroys the caps that are on each end of the fuel rod projectiles. The rods are equipped with an activation delay that protects the wielder from explosions caused by careless firing fuel rods into nearby objects, however a fuel rod will detonate if fired into enemies at point blank range. The fuel rod gun is used by most of the Covenant infantry, it is often wielded by Ungoy whose small stature and trigger happy tendency present a particular problem for UNSC forces. Higher ranking elites and brutes are also seen wielding them, however this is decidedly more rare and it isn't as common as the Ungoy. 
an extremely powerful and devastating weapon, the Covenant went to great lengths to ensure that it does not fall into enemy hands. The most prevalent model of the Furod gun was equipped with a failsafe that activates under certain conditions. This model was utilised for the large majority of the Human Covenant War and was only replaced by a variation without this failsafe in the closing months of the war. This failsafe is engaged either by the user dropping the weapon without first engaging a safety, or if the weapon runs out of ammunition and is not reloaded after a certain amount of time. The result is that an internal energetic component backfeeds and ignites. The intense heat generated as a result destroys the weapon and often detonates any ammunition still within the weapon, resulting in a devastating explosion that utterly vaporizes the weapon and any objects nearby. The Furod gun fires a Class II 38mm radioactive explosive from a 5 round magazine at a firing rate approximately 2 rounds per second. The projectile travels in a parabolic arc at approximately 72 meters or 236 feet per second and has a maximum effective range of 165 meters or 540 feet. After which time, if the projectile hasn't impacted any targets, the casing will generally deteriorate during flight and finally spontaneously combust. A particularly skilled operator could use this to their advantage by firing the projectile to its maximum range and using this deterioration during flight to create an airburst strike, causing splash damage to targets concealed behind cover, though this is not an exact science and would require a significant amount of guesswork. The projectiles are also known as fuel rods. They are highly radioactive. These projectiles have a devastating effect on their targets. When the fuel rods impact an area or a target, it is instantly subjected to temperatures as hot as standard plasma weapons, but on a much larger scale. A direct impact to a body results in instant flash vaporization, while also dealing splash damage to targets nearby and often lethal doses of radiation to targets outside of the immediate kill zone. Impacts to vehicles often boil away any armour plating, kill the occupants, and have been known to destroy the vehicle in one shot if it strikes a critical component. The Furod gun's projectile use a form of incendiary gel similar to the Mogalic Golo assault cannons. However, where the assault cannons use an incendiary gel, the fuel rods are compressed canisters of gel which maintain their cohesion until impact, upon which they explode, releasing the incendiary gel and radiation over a wide area. The Furod gun is an extremely devastating weapon in the hands of skilled infantry units. The destructive power of the fuel rod is so effective that human forces often focus all of their attention on infantry wielding the fuel rod gun. The gun also takes less time to reload than the UNSC's rocket launcher, which is widely considered to be its counterpart, can often hold more ammunition in both magazine and reserve, has very slight tracking ability and a faster rate of fire. The fuel rods will arc once in flight and lose their accuracy over long distances. The large size of the weapon obscures the wielder's peripheral vision and it reduces the speed of weaker infantry holding it because of its significant weight, unless it is a Spartan carrying the weapon due to their superior strength. The bright colour of the weapon makes the wielder easy to spot even when the weapon is backpacked. The green flash that occurs when the weapon is fired can also give away the user's position. The fuel rods are extremely slow in flight, as a result, fuel rods are particularly weak against most reconnaissance vehicles, including ghosts, warthogs, banshees, brute choppers and mongooses at long range. This is because the intended target will easily dodge the fuel rod. Also, the fuel rods often bounce off of the ground, missing their intended targets, unless it is a direct hit or you are directly facing the surface. The fuel rod gun serves its purpose of the battlefield with particular flair in regards to raw damage, intimidation and area of effect. Its powerful radioactive ammunition is of particular threat to organic targets and the intense heat is equally effective at peeling armour plating from a vehicle as flesh from bone. The Furod gun is a weapon worth picking up if found on the battlefield, and worth taking down quickly if spotted being used by a foe. That or just run away. Thanks for watching. Stick your comments down below, I look forward to what you have to say. I want to give a quick shout out to my patrons, Neek the Silent Cartographer, Brian Sebastian, Red Sea, Darian, Stalker of the Realms, Falcon X003, and Mr. Fell, the Holders of the Mantle, Black Biscuit, J Rabbit, Austin, Kaiser, Silux, Reclaimer 216, The Revanche, Wolf Slim, Andre, Samantha, and Jake, my Reclaimers, 
Zack, Deep Cover, Verbal Statue, Spesigo, Spartan A498, Guppy, Josh, Bastion, Molshan, Night Rise, Sierra G059, Kenneth, Dylan, and Daniel, my Metarchs, and all the other patrons that have jumped aboard to support the channel. You guys are awesome, and all this wouldn't be possible without you. If you like Halo Lore discussed to insane levels of detail, hit that subscribe button and the little bell icon so you're told the second a new video hits the shelves. Be sure to support us on all major social media channels including Discord and if you really love the channel, consider heading over to Patreon or clicking the join button to become a channel member and supporting the channel that way. It would mean the world to me and would free up more of my time for me to put into this content and other Halo related goodness. Take it easy everyone, and find peace in the domain.